All right, this is going to be another little short video, unfortunately. I was planning a longer video and then uh, the, uh, you know, my day uh, got, got a little bit crazy and I had to take care of a bunch of stuff that I wasn't planning on. Um, all right. So as I mentioned, I guess in the last brief little video, I, uh, I want to build some service. I want to build um, basically a clone of something like um, Instapaper or, or, or Pocket or Wallabag, a read it later kind of bookmarking service. And the reason is that I, I use Wallabag. I have, um, I have a video on Wallabag where I was checking out their code and um, I want to, uh, there's some things that I don't love about it and I want to customize it more for my, for my setup. And I figured this would be um, a, a relatively simple way to get my feet wet in terms of trying out Haskell, um, the Haskell gRPC stuff. Now, uh, that being said, um, I had set aside uh, at least an hour uh, for today, but now um, that time is all passed. So I'm not sure what I'm really gonna be able to, to do, but I'd like to do something. I think maybe the first thing I'll do is look up some of these APIs of things that already exist and, um, and just make sure I have a sense of what, what they're up to so I don't miss anything that um, the, the people who have been in this space for a while uh, know that I don't know, kind of naively looking at it. So I'll look at Pocket, I'll look at uh, Instapaper. I don't know what else there is. I guess well, we might as well look at Wallabag. All right, Instapaper, full API. HMAC SHA-1, only HMAC SHA-1. I think that's okay, but OAuth 1.0. Is Instapaper still around? Is, not past tense. The transition was completed. It was transferred from Pinterest to a newly formed company in 2018. Yeah, I guess they're still around. Okay. At any rate, OAuth 1.0. What is, I'm just first of all, I'm just curious, how old is this OAuth version? Because um, if their API is really old, then maybe they are not the, um, maybe that's just not so useful to learn from them. OAuth 2.0 is what, 2013? Okay. So assuming this is up to date, this seems like it's a pretty old API. It's of 2014. Um, okay, but let's at least look what they do. The, um, the basic gist of all of this stuff should be you, uh, ask it to send some article. The backend is kind of going to like crawl the web and um, produce essentially like an archived version of the of the URL. And it's going to do a little bit of massaging to, to put that uh, website into a more readable version, kind of like when you click on the read the uh, reader icon in, in the browser. And then there will be some metadata associated with it, with the, you know, with the entry. Uh, and the metadata will be things like there might be a title and an author. There might be something like how, an estimate of how long it will take you to read that article. And then there will be other stuff in the database that's around things like um, organizing your playlist, et cetera. Um, and so what does this API look like? Can I? I just see the, the code. This is a lot of text. Maybe simple API documentation. Okay, so we have add. And you're sending the username and the password, I guess, in the, in the post, maybe? Uh, with the URL and the title and a selection will show up as the description under an item on the interface, which is where it came from. This is kind of like a note. I don't know why it's called selected selection. Redirect equals close specifies that instead of returning the status code, the resulting page show an HTML save notification. Huh. Okay. And then whatever JSON P is. JSON P parameter to add or authenticate. Hmm. Like a callback name. This is kind of a wild thing. Um, 
custom stuff like preferred language. And is that all we can add? And we can authenticate. We delete. We can list kind of standard rest stuff. And the list will take a limit, a folder ID. And the folders are unread starred archive or a folder ID from a list of folders. So I guess this, um, the metaphor here is it's kind of like email and there's some list, it's, it's, uh, the, the, there's a bunch of folders and things that are either unread or archived or starred, um, or you have some folder, like you can classify it as being about some certain topic or whatever, or maybe things to read on the train versus things to read, uh, on top of the train, whatever, however you live your life. Okay, so that's list update read progress. So I guess this is something that you would call as you're processing an article. You give it a bookmark ID, I guess bookmark ID is what they're calling an article. The progress between zero and one, essentially a percentage and a progress timestamp when it was recorded. And I'm guessing this timestamp is probably used for um, if it gets multiple progress updates on the same article, possibly from different devices, then um, I'm guessing they use the progress timestamp to, uh, to decide who wins. And then add, I think we already looked at the resolve final URL. And this is, I guess, essentially Boolean. The default is one. Specify one if the URL might not be the final URL that the browser might resolve. Okay. So if it's known to be shortened or, or maybe a redirect or, or proxied, okay. There's a bunch of, this is a little bit odd. This is kind of like a fetcher parameter and the bookmark is more of a uh, app level stuff. So I feel like we're, I think, I feel like Instapaper is a little bit mixing the, um, mixing the layers, I guess, but to some extent, you know, I'm not sure where else redirect, uh, whatever final result would go if not in the bookmark, I suppose. And then you can delete, you can star it. I guess starring is like favoriting, unstar, archive, and un unarchive. And that just is whether you've read it or not. You can move it, I guess, between folders. You can get text. And then we have folder methods. These are just gonna be, I guess, the standard um, like CRUD type methods. And then we have highlights, which is for highlighting. Um, but what are, what are they made out of? It's a list of highlights for bookmark ID. What is a single highlight? It's got the text for the highlight in a position which is the zero index position of the text. I guess the text for the highlight is like, um, essentially by, you're gonna match the literal text. And I don't know how that works if you're going to, um, like let's say you're reading uh, some, some Wikipedia article for an essay you're writing and you highlight some paragraph, then if you're recording the literal text, then What's going to happen if the, you know, if they change one word, I guess that no longer matches. So I think that might be a little bit brittle to, to use the text. I'm, I'm thinking maybe position is better, but it's not clear either because like a position can shift as well. Um, so I'll see if other APIs have a better, um, a better way of handling it. Or maybe just continue to use the existing one that you've highlighted. And then we've got some credentials and stuff. Okay. That's relatively straightforward there's a little few surprises in there in the sense that like um i think it's just an older api maybe before people really standardize on exactly what a, a rest api is here's wallabag where's their api documentation uh, so this is useful but let's go back to pocket because pocket's another professionally developed one and wallabag is is like an open source app um, I use article view API and preferences API. I'm guessing that preferences is, oh, add and modify and retrieve. These are all good. I'm gonna actually look at all these.
DiffBot. If you are looking for a general text parser to, or to provide read now functionality in your app, we do not currently support that. And DiffBot apparently does. Web data for your AI. Seems like DiffBot has pivoted to AI. Okay, well, whatever DiffBot is doing. So the view API will return article content and relevant metadata from any provided URL. Okay. I don't know what the relevant metadata is, but it's something relevant. So add for get pocket is a URL and a title, similar to Instapaper tags. I guess tagging was popular when, um, when pocket was created. Maybe tags are still cool. I don't know. The tweet ID is built into the pocket API. Really? Um, well now Twitter, <laughs> Twitter is no more. And, uh, the, the burnt husk of a sh shell. Is called X. Um, and then we're also passing in authentication data, I guess, as parameters to the, to the ad. Um, all right. And we've got some more stuff. Is this more stuff or is this just a response? The response will have things like the item ID. I'm not sure why you need that, but maybe that's something like a database row, the original URL. Why is it normal URL? I don't know. Um, a unique identifier for the resolved item and the resolved URL. So for example, this could be the thing that was redirected to the domain of the resolved URL. I don't know why you can't just get that from the, the resolved URL. Maybe they're trying to optimize here, but this should be redundant data and some response code. So this is all, a lot of this is crawler stuff. We have MIME type, content length, date published, et cetera. Okay, videos, array of video data, if videos are found, images. Yeah, I'm not sure I thought about how to add um, images or videos and authors and stuff. An excerpt, I don't know how they're gonna do excerpt. Maybe that's just pulled from the HTML. Make sure to URL encode the parameters you are sending. Okay, so that's, that's like relatively straightforward, I think. Hello. I'm getting some chat and actually, you know what? I don't know how to do this chat pop out. Now I do. Okay. I'll say hi. Um, all right. So here's, here's modifying something. So whatever send is. Allows your application to send a single event or multiple events and actions that will modify the user's data in one call, the user's data, like user data or the article, I don't know. So you have some consume with some key uh, access token in action, which is a, J <laughs> this is a JSON array of stuff to do. And the actions are things like archive. So this is kind of like a, a poor man's um, RPC, right? So you're like sending an RPC message uh, what if an action has parameters? I don't know. The add and the actions are add archive re add, which is unarchive. You can favorite, unfavorite. That's the same as star and unstar. You can delete and you can modify tags. Okay, cool, simple. And you can get data. That all seems fine. This is all authentication. I don't care about that. Here's the article view stuff. We saw that. Here's preferences. This is like some Google form. Okay. Um, and then here's wallet bag API. Hello, Nicola. All right. All right. All right. Okay, so here's Wallabag, and we've got entries. This is looking more like a, um, I guess maybe standard uh, REST API, get post, put, delete. And these are annotations, I guess these are probably like highlights. I looked at these before, I think in the, in the video on Wallabag. Um, we've got some config stuff. I don't know what, uh, what the config options are. 
And then for entries, which I guess is what the what someone else maybe into the paper called bookmarks. Uh, we can check if it exists. We can read, yeah. I'll, this is th to me all this like kind of Rust style is really noisy. Uh, but I think that we'll find as if we like as we like implement a um, a CRUD style RPC uh, API, things are also going to be a little bit redundant. I think and noisy. Uh, but we can we can list entries in lists entries with an s oh sorry we can delete a list we can post some stuff lists we can reload an entry i think this is maybe this might be to refetch content like if the content changed oh i can actually like call these methods i guess um so is this is there maybe a uh Here's how to interact. I don't want to interact. I just want to see the. Um, I just want to see the API. Is there a better interface? Yeah. Oh, whatever. All right, and we can search, which is useful. I didn't see that on Instapaper or, um, or Pocket, but presumably it's some there somehow, or maybe it's, maybe you need their their app to do it. And then we've got tags. And whatever a tagging rule is, maybe apply tags programmatically. And what? And that's fine. All of that's fine. Can I like go to the code? Try it out. Um, let's try. Let's try just doing a search. Let's try a Google search. There's some uh, Rust API thing. Is this just the same site? You can create an API. All right, whatever. Okay, so that's uh, that's that's all fine. That's all fine. So let's make. Um, I think I'm gonna call it Lector. Because the the thing that I want is not just to, to like scroll through my phone. I want um, I want it to read stuff to me. I want it to basically convert um, text articles into something more like a podcast. And the Wallabag app for Android does that reasonably well. It's not super polished, um, but it's usable. But I want it to um, I want it to be like optimized as as for the audio format and also usable for um, for scrolling through, looking at it with my eyeballs, in addition to using my earballs. Um, and I, I like this word lector, Latin for one who reads, whether allowed or not. And um, applied to lecturers and readers, yeah. And then sometimes I guess people who read liturgy, liturgy and in cigar production, historically, lectors, known as lectors, I don't know how that's pronounced, I guess, in Spanish, or readers in a cigar factory entertain workers by reading books or newspapers aloud, often left-wing publications, paid for by unions, or by workers pulling their money. In the United States, the custom was common in the cigar factories of Ybor, Ybor City in Tampa, but was discontinued after the uh, Ybor City Cigar Maker's Strike of 1931. And it originated in Cuba. Cool. And now I'll, I'll try to read. Here's the, my wallet bag thing. I don't know if that works. Yeah. So I'll read about this cigar strike later. Okay. So that, um, I think I'll call it Lector. Can I do make directory from here? I think I can, right? And I'll call it Lector. And then. I'm not really sure how to um, organize this, but I guess what I'll do is I'll make a backend directory and a front end directory. And right now, the Haskell stuff is going to be the backend. But before we get there, we need some protos. 
to define the API. Um, I'll just start with lecture.proto. And I actually forget the, the protocol buffer syntax. So let's pull that up. Yeah, okay. So I can't remember, let's see. Proto two versus proto three. I can't remember um, which one I should use. Proto three is deprecated. Proto sorry, proto one is deprecated. Proto three is a simplification of proto two. Both are active. They are wire compatible. Okay. What I don't know is whether um, uh, gRPC Haskell will support both. So maybe let's take a look at um, what is used in the examples. Get proto three. All right, well, I'll use proto three. And we have a proto buff mode. Not found. Um, and what's going on here? Maybe I'll copy from the, uh, Yeah, okay, so we'll have service. Um, I just call it lecture. If you want to use your messages with an RPC, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so they are using the suffix service, which I. I think I remember as being best practice at, at Google. So I think I'll do that. So we'll call this mm, lecture service. That may, I may regret that later. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, and then for RPCs, um, we'll want to do things like, um, I call them articles. I don't know, people call them bookmarks, but we'll see. Um, We'll ignore update, but we'll just do basic stuff like add, delete. Um, what else do we? What else do we need to do? Um, like favoriting, I guess is. Uh, is uh, not something that I have used on, on Wallabag, so I'm not going to add it yet. Um, we can always add it later, and. Is there anything else I want to do? I guess this is good enough for now. And we need to um, have some types and return types. I think it's just our, our, our request and response. Yeah. Whoa, well, now. There you go. So we'll just return. Do I need a second parentheses here?
So that's, I mean, this will be simple enough for us to get started. Um, and then we need some messages. And I think we just copy from here. So message as article request. It's going to take what? First of all, there should not be, there should not be an extraneous Z here. Um, it's going to have some URL, which I think should just be a string. It's going to have some, um, it's going to have some article metadata. And so one thing, one thing I can ask is whether, um, I, whether that article meta, metadata is worth factoring out into its own message. Like, is there any time when I will just want to be exchanging article metadata? And I'm not sure. So I'll just add it in here, I guess. But it'll be things like uh, title. Um, oh, wait, I need numbers here, right? Uh, and author. Anything else? I can look on my my uh, my wallet bag app here. I think this thing is good. I'd rather start simple and add stuff later. Um, the add article response will just be nothing. Like an empty message. We'll get a um, we'll get a status code back that'll tell us whether the the thing succeeded or failed. So delete article request. Actually, you know what? We should get back um, maybe an N sixty four. Is that too big? I'm guessing it might be useful to have um, an N64 as a unique ID. We'll call this the article ID, which will probably essentially be just something from the from the database, maybe obfuscated. Okay, and so um, when you delete an article, I guess you'll need to refer to it by its ID. And the delete article response will just be the empty message and uh, the archive article request. We'll just, you'll pass in the article ID. Okay, so that's a simple um, proto, proto, API, proto API. Um. Oh, wait, no, because I need numbers here. And I should probably check whether this compiles. Do I have a protocol buffer, a protocol com compiler? Okay. Let me install this, but I will, um, can I hide my, let me hide my, um, thing image here. One second, my screen. Okay, so uh, that seems to have worked. I forget how to invoke it. So 
So we have protoc, and then we have uh, um, I directory will be this directory, P. Sure, we'll use CPP. Will be this directory as well, and then whatever this file is called, lector.proto. Did that work? All right. Cool. And then I'll just go ahead and commit that. And like I said, I only have a few minutes right now. Um, and I will uh, deal with um, implementing it later. This is extra white space. Is there a white space? White space cleanup. There we go. As I add draft um, proto file for um, lector service. I'll say lector will be a read it later style app optimized for um, converting text to audio. And then if everything is right with the world, I can push this to Garrett. And how do I do that push? No? P, capital P, right? Oh, that was what I did. No. Oh, Q. There we go. And do I have Garrett open? I thought I might, but I'm not sure. Uh -oh. Let's try the terminal. Oh, you know what? I need to push ref. Yeah, I need to do this thing, right? No new changes. Oh, I think I buy. I think I bypassed code review. And I'm too. Um, that's unfortunate. But I don't think I want to go through the the um, nastiness of um, overwriting the remote branch. Do I? Yeah, let's try it. So what I do, I'm going to do get um, rebase, maybe head minus one sort of thing. Maybe reset. And so this push should fail, right? Yeah. But if I force it, it might ruin my day. <laughs> Let's see what goes on. Okay. Prohibited by Garrett. Okay, okay, okay. I need to push right to the force to do a non fast forward first. All right. Um, well, it's permitted, it's prohibited by by policy. And I don't think that um I don't think it's the end of the world. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, tomorrow, I'm not going to be working on this because I'm going to be doing some code reading. I'm going to be looking at the Redux, um, the Redux source code. Uh, but next week, assuming that I don't have like uh, kids staying home sick and whatnot, um, I should be uh, good to go to be working on building stuff um, for most of the week. And then I, 
I think one day of the week I'll do code reading and the rest of the week I think will be focused on streaming um, of the writing of some code. So I hope to see you there.